It's almost fall. Hi knitters, it's Maggie from Knitting in the Park and in this video I'm going to show you how I make these really fun, festive, fall, faux velvet, <laughs> that's not enough F's for you, pumpkins. So every fall our house basically turns into a fibrous pumpkin patch. Uh, a couple years ago I started making these really fun pumpkins. They come in all kinds of different color options. You can make them in different sizes There's so that they can stack. Uh, and they're just really fun festive fall decorations. They just, I love them. There's, I love adding a bit of softness to something that's normally quite hard. Um, if you think of like pumpkins and gourds. So I've got a green one that I've knitted up and I'm ready to form into the pumpkin. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we'll show you how I do that. But what you're going to need is a skein of though velvet yarn. This is Bernat. It's made by Yarnspirations. You can get it at any major craft store like Joann's. Not sure about Michael's because I don't really pop in there as much. Um, but you can also get it straight from the Yarnspirations website if you just search like Bernat faux velvet yarn. This comes right up. Comes in a bunch of different colors. I'm also starting to make them in some different yarns. Like I'm playing around this year and having a lot of fun with pumpkins, clearly. So this is a larger size, obviously. Um, I've tried the larger size in the velvet as well, which I'll be posting on the website. But right now on my website, you can get this tutorial for this medium sized pumpkin. I'm also planning on a small as well. And then who knows, I might just get crazy with it and do some cables and, and fun pumpkin things. But anyway, you need the skein of yarn, if you want a stem cinnamon stick, which you'll probably end up cutting in half, but it's up to you. And then I like to use some kind of thicker thread or twine. This is Baker's twine, which I have in a ginormous spool so that you can cinch it up without breaking the yarn. If you just try to cinch up and really pull on that velvet yarn, it actually tends to break. So um, a spare bit of something a bit stronger is also very helpful scissors and darning needle and hot glue. All right, let's get started. Okay, so now that you've got your velvet yarn and your supplies, you're ready to go ahead and knit up your pumpkin. I use a US size 10 circular needle. Just because you're going to be knitting in the round but I assume you could also do this on straight needles and just have to stitch it up at some point. So those are, um, I've got this one on a shorter pair of like hat circulars right here. But you're going to cast on 90 stitches and join it in the round. And I like to leave an extra long tail. It makes it kind of frustrating to knit with, but this, this will come in handy. And then when I finish, so I'm going to cast on 90 stitches and then I tend to, for this medium size, knit about 10 inches or so, maybe a little bit more. And then I don't bother casting off. What I do is I leave another long tail because I use this butcher's twine to cinch up the pumpkin. And then by having this extra long piece of velvet, you can kind of cover that up. Now you can bind off and just hide any kind of velvet, velvet tail left and then cut an additional piece and cover that yarn or the twine, it's up to you. But to finish off this pumpkin and get started, I'm going to use my darning needle, just thread my baker's twine. Again, this looks like a thicker yarn, but there's actually this all comes off of a pretty thin thread on the inside. So the yarn itself is less bulky than it looks. So to be able to cinch, cinch this up and not worry about it breaking, I use a th stronger thread or baker's twine. So you're just going to work your way around. Oops. working your needle through 
your tapestry needle, whatever you call it, uh, the live stitches. Like I said, if you're worried about dropping a live stitch in this step or just prefer to have a little bit more secure edge, border, you can always bind off. I'll show you what we're going to do with the cast on edge. You would just do that uh, with both sides if you choose to bind off. So bear with me here. So you're just going to kind of weave the tail. You don't need to form a knot to anchor it or anything. Just if you do give it a tug as you work around, just make sure that you're not pulling it through so you don't lose your live stitches. Almost done here. This velvet yarn is so rich and it's got such a great depth to it and with all the different shades, it's just so nice. Okay, so it's already pretty nicely cinched here. I'm going to just give it another tug or so. Take my needle off. Just do a square knot here, so. If you use another thicker yarn, this uh, can get a little bulky and you might not be able to get as tight of a center here. But what I like to do, now that we have it knotted and secured, is to thread my sewing needle again. And then I take one of the ends of this butcher's twine. And I pick it up from one side and go to the other and just kind of create a knot. Just so when I go to stuff it, this, whether this becomes the top or bottom, is nice and taut and there's no big hole that the stuffing is going to poke out of. Now it's really easy to hide this, so don't worry about whether you've got tails showing, but I am going to trim it just for ease of use. So, pardon my really long tails here, but our pumpkin is starting to take shape. Okay. Oh, um, something to fill the pumpkin with. I forgot polyfill on my list of instructions. I get my polyfill either from Amazon or Joann's, whatever is easier. Okay. Now we're going to take a second piece of butcher's twine, a decently long one, because this is what we're going to use to shape the pumpkin. So take your second piece of butcher's twine, and then for this cast on edge, and if you chose to bind off, I just go around kind of picking up stitches, catching like every other or so, just enough that I can cinch the pumpkin together. Doesn't have to be perfect. I like to do this before you start stuffing because you can kind of half cinch this side of the pumpkin closed and then it makes it easier to make sure you've got the right amount of stuffing. Try to keep it as close to the cast on edge as possible as you're working your way around. Again, this should be a lot longer than the first piece of butcher's twine you used, just because you're going to be wrapping it around the pumpkin and cinching that pumpkin down to get that shape. So essentially, you've just knitted a tube. 
And now you're going to shape that tube into your bumpkin. Okay, so this is kind of, you can tell it's a lot smaller of a hole. It's like half cinched down. And I'm gonna shove some polyfill in. I like to make sure I like to make sure that I get it like start filling the outside edges of the pumpkin first. And you can kind of work it in there. You don't want to fill it too much because you want to leave room to be able to cut into the pumpkin and get that shape. So again, you're going to cinch your butcher's twine up and knot it as much as you can. Nice and taut. Doesn't have to be that perfect hole so you can see I have a little bit of a space here where I can stick my finger in. What I'm going to do to close that up is take the shorter end of my butcher's twine again, just like we did on the other side. Go from one side of that hole to the other, kind of picking up that bind off edge and then making a knot. So now it's much more cinched. We'll do a couple more times here. Because I think this is going to be the side I make the top of the pumpkin. We'll see. All right. Now it's time to thread the long piece of twine. And this is probably the trickiest part of the whole process. Let's see, all right, Doug. That's my camera. You don't, you don't need to lay there. Okay, so you're going to take it from the let's call this the top and the other side the bottom. So take it from the top, and then you're going to poke the darning needle through the bottom of the pumpkin, back up through the top. Pull it relatively nice and tight so you can see here that you're starting to form the shape of the pumpkin. So take it around to the other side. Again, stick your needle from the bottom back up through the top. Of course, now it's going to bunch up and get twisted. Oh, why do you have to know when I'm trying to do a tutorial? I like to work on opposite sides just so you can kind of see how far you are. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Bringing it from the top or from the bottom. Up to the top, pulling it tight, wrapping it around going from the bottom up through the top. So I do four times. You can leave your pumpkin at that if you want, but I like to do like split each of these four sections once more. So one more there, go to the other side, line up my twine. And you can kind of zhuzh and finagle this as you go, but I like to just 
kind of lay my twine where it's going to go so I can see as I work. And one more. And pull it tight. So it's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's kind of the beauty of it. And then I take the two tails and tie them together a bit more for a good knot. Like I said, you can hide these by threading them through your darning needle and then just pulling them down through the center of your pumpkin and then you can just trim them. Especially when they're at the bottom. Okay. So. Where's my super long? You don't have to do this step, especially if your yarn matches or your thread, whatever you've cinched your pumpkin with but mine doesn't match so what I'm going to do is take this extra long tail of the velvet yarn that I used and I'm just going to kind of find that butcher's twine and overlay it so this way I cover up where my twine was and I just kind of this way I can Whereas I went opposite sides before, now I just work my way around the pumpkin. Super easy, especially when you've done it a couple of times. These are really cute to have around your own house. They make adorable gifts. So if you need a hostess gift or know somebody that's got a fall birthday, if you're like me, you just like to give gifts uh, and don't particularly need a rhyme or reason all the time. Um, but like to make it thematic, now the pumpkins are where it's at. All right. Okay, so most of it's covered. I did pull a little too tightly there, but you can just kind of pull and judge as you need to, and it hides the butcher's twine. You have a nice, beautiful pumpkin. This I'm going to use when it's time to put on the stem for this pumpkin. But if you want, you can kind of not your velvet. Now this doesn't have to be done as tight, but it is nice to just kind of shove it through the bottom a few times, grabbing some of the stitches that you've done and then threading it back up through. And then if you want, you can leave a short tail here um, and finish that off with hot glue in a little bit. But you could use, I might use the full, um, usually I cut this in half, but this is really cute. So I'm going to hot glue this in the center here, and then I'm going to use this extra tail to kind of cover up the center of my pumpkin a little bit more and just make it really neat and 
have a nice transition into the stem. And that's how you make a knitted velvet pumpkin. Drop the links for this pattern and then as I make the other sizes available in the box below. So you can always check out knittinginthepark.com for lots more patterns and knitting instructions and tutorials.